what are some of the clinical scenarios that contribute to misdiagnosis of MS? And are there apparent trends or similarities between cases that are being misdiagnosed? I, I think the problem of misdiagnosis is something that's been identified recently. And it's something that perhaps bears out of our push to develop the diagnosis of MS or to develop tools to make a diagnosis of MS earlier and earlier. We've recognized the importance of early treatment in multiple sclerosis, and the corollary of that is making sure we diagnose patients early so that we can start these treatments early. And if you look at the evolution of the diagnostic criteria, um, they evolved from purely clinical criteria to a criteria that incorporated um, CSF biomarkers and then MRI biomarkers. And the overall trend has been that it has been easier and easier to make the diagnosis, or you can make the diagnosis earlier and earlier. And with each iteration of the diagnostic criteria, what we see is that the diagnosis can be made with more, you know, with more use of the diagnostic biomarkers. And I think one of the problems that we've identified is that although MRI has been a very useful tool and is a very sensitive tool for the diagnosis of MS, um, perhaps there is some room to increase the specificity of the diagnostic criteria. And to answer your question, who are the patients who are being misdiagnosed? I think it's a little bit of a variety. So a lot of this work was done by one of our co-investigators, Andy Solomon, who really put this on the map um, for the first time several years ago with a couple of seminal papers that I kind of refer your readership to. Um, but essentially what he found is that uh, misdiagnosis was frequent, so it was occurring in about 20% of patients, and that the majority of cases of misdiagnosis was mainly due to misinterpretation of the MRIs. And so I think this happens in a couple of different scenarios. There are conditions that also produce spots in the brain that can be misdiagnosed as MS, and those include uh, people with vascular risk factors, and so those are individuals that typically are older um, and have uh, higher degrees of hypertension, high cholesterol, um, uh, diabetes, smokers, those individuals tend to have more lesions and therefore just as a, just as a function of the increase in the number of lesions, you can, you can satisfy MS diagnostic criteria in those patients who don't actually don't have MS lesions. And then there's other patients who have other um, disorders that are associated with lesions in the brain or spots in the brain that aren't MS lesions. And, and the typical example there are patients with migraine headaches. And so that's where you kind of see this misinterpretation. And then I would say that there's a third you know, category or you know, a group of people where um, there are patients who have a lot of neurological symptoms and perhaps they have what we consider non-specific brain changes. And you know, in a non-expert hand, in a non-MS you know, um, trained neurologist, um, in the hands of a, you know, a primary care doctor or perhaps a radiologist who's interpreting a study which is kind of billed as you know, a person who has you know, potential to myelinating disease. I think there, there, perhaps there is the opportunity that those patients um, with neurological symptoms that sometimes fall along the spectrum of fibromyalgia um, might also have some nonspecific brain changes that would, you know, would then be inaccurately diagnosed with MS and have diagnostic criteria applied based on MRI changes that are nonspecific. 